So we get a lot of questions about, uh, you know, what are sort of the most exciting cars we've sold? Uh, and what are the, I would say, the, the most expensive cars that we've sold? And it doesn't always mean that the most expensive cars we've sold have been the most exciting cars we've sold. But over the past five years, I would say, you know, formally at our dealership here and at another two years as we started, um, we have had the opportunity to sell some of the most incredible cars. So we wanted to share with you today a list of let's call it 15 of the most exciting cars that we've ever sold here at Curated. Um, and we are gonna start, uh, the list is gonna be, a, 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 let's call it maybe slightly confusing. I'm gonna have some runner ups, uh, a, f a few changes maybe in between, but we're gonna start with the most expensive car that we've ever sold and that would be a Porsche GT1. Um, now, if you don't know what a Porsche GT1 is, uh, it is essentially the holy grail of all Porsche supercars. This is the car that went out, uh, basically a homologation, a street car of Porsche's GT1 Le Mans racer. Uh, 25 cars were built. Uh, it doesn't get more rare, I believe. There's probably three or four in the US. They never come up for sale. A few years ago, a car traded uh, with Gooding and Company uh, for many, many millions. Um, now, unfortunately, due to a very solid NDA, we can't tell you much about the car. We can't tell you where it went. But yes, we had the opportunity to sell a Porsche GT1. So definitely one of the most exciting. Next, I would have to say, would be the Van Halen Mura. Now, if you guys don't remember, I think we did a video a very long time ago. We got a call from a good friend of ours, uh, and he basically put us direct to, God rest him, Eddie Van Halen, um, one of the greatest guitar players of our time. Uh, we worked with Eddie, and uh, if you don't know, Eddie passed, unfortunately. Um, he was battling uh, a, a, a few health conditions and uh, will will forever live on with us because he made such an impact. Um, unfortunately, I was in Europe at the time. I couldn't inspect the car, uh, but I sent my uncle and Eddie was uh, gracious. Um, he was funny and uh, he was a true gearhead and we appreciate him to this day and we love him. And uh, we had this opportunity to buy his collection. His collection included uh, two Audi R8s, uh, a V8 and a V10. They were both supercharged, um, which was pretty cool. And uh, it was his Mura. And um, we ended up selling the Mura to an incredible uh, uh, collector, an enthusiast, uh, also a, a Van Halen fan. Um, and that was the same Mura that was used uh, in the beginning, uh, actually in the end of the song Panama. So if you listen to Panama, you're a Van Halen fan, and you hear revving in that song, that was that Mura. They actually backed it up to the studio and used it for the song. Uh, so huge gearhead, he had owned the car. It was a wedding gift uh, from Valerie Bertinelli, uh, 19, I think it was 1980 or 1979, April 11th, because that was the license plate he had on the car. Um, and it was a very special car. It was this crazy wide body with wide wheels. Um, and now it's back at the Lamborghini factory, uh, complete restoration uh, uh, through Pol Historico, and it will be finished very soon. We're excited to unveil that car and, uh, and honor Eddie, but definitely one of the most exciting. I would say then next on the list, it's probably a tie. And, and the reason I'm gonna say it's a tie is I can't choose the color, um, but one of our LP640 manuals. Um, I'd have to say it's either the yellow, the green, the orange uh, LP640 manuals. Listen, we know, and I don't have to tell you guys, these cars have gotten so rare. Uh, I, I believe, uh, you know, all of the cars now that I've sold, maybe it's six or seven LP640 manuals are now in what I call their forever home. Uh, collectors that have fallen in love, they'll never sell. I don't see these cars coming back to us or being on the market anytime soon. So again, to be part of their history, and, and I believe one day we'll look back on these cars and say, wow, uh, they only made, you know, 40 for North America or whatever the, uh, <laughs> the the, uh, uh, you know, whatever the value is in 10, 20 years from now. Um, so at definitely LP640 manuals. And then again, um, probably, uh, you know, they're always exciting when we get them. Um, I think, I believe we've sold six or seven Ferrari F50s. Every single F50 is special. They're very rare, but one of the uh, 100 mile, I think it was 180 mile F50 we sold 
a complete benchmark car. This car was brand new in the wrapper. It went to a very special VIP. So again, very cool story. Uh, another one of the cars. Um, and then we can't forget the Nigel Mansell F40, which is being used, it's being enjoyed. Uh, we will be showing that car for the new owner um, at Cavallino, the big Ferrari show in January of next year. Uh, so again, one of the most important Ferrari Formula One drivers, the last Formula One driver uh, to be inducted, uh, to be hired by Enzo Ferrari before his death. Um, and a crazy history around that car, including a lawsuit with Nigel Mansell, and it was one of the early sliding window F40s. So very, very cool car, um, and, and one of the more exciting cars that we sold. And, and as we're talking about, um, I would say, crazy history and Formula One history, our Lamborghini Formula One car. Um, this is not, it was a car that we had actually sold twice. Um, so it, it'll be coming back to the US now. It was in, uh, in Europe for a little bit. Um, and this was the sixth place Monaco Formula One car, La Russe uh, Venturi Lamborghini V12 engine, a car that raced in the 1992 series against guys like Schumacher, Senna, uh, Mansell, you name it. Uh, so important part of Lamborghini history. It wasn't very successful um, while it raced, but an important part of Lamborghini history and an iconic car. I would have loved to keep it uh, in my living room <laughs> if I could. Uh, and then I would say in terms of Countach's, there's two cars that really uh, stand out to me. One is the Monaco pace car, and uh, sorry about that phone call. One is the Monaco Grand Prix pace car car that we've shown, a car that we've loved. We have it here um, at our showroom and, and we'll be showing it in Europe sometime next year, hopefully. Uh, the owner is an incredible caretaker. He's a great friend of ours and has allowed us to basically share it with the world. Uh, Mimran history, Lamborghini ownership history. Uh, it, it ran the Monaco Grand Prix in 1981 and 1982. Uh, so very, very cool and a complete time capsule. I think 4,000 original miles, original paint, original interior, and it just is so, so iconic. And we had this for a short time, but I don't know if you guys remember, the blue Tahiti downdraft Countach. Sold it too quick, sold it too cheap, but it is one of the most beautiful Countach's we've had. A factory color that is captivating. I mean, it's blue Tahiti on white interior, white wheels. We did a video where we were actually driving it and that car was just so stunning. Um, and we've had so many great Countach's, but that car just shocked everyone when they saw it. Um, and then, uh, if you think about 80s iconic cars and, and, and sort of spec, the Miami Vice Testarossa. I mean, uh, more recent sale uh, and, and definitely a, you could call it maybe one of the most famous Ferraris in history. So uh, a, an honor to be part of that car's history. Um, and then there's two Lamborghini LM002s that really sort of, uh, I would say, are so important to the brand and so important to what we sold. It's the Dakar Rally car, um, which was one of four uh, period LM that raced in different rallies. Uh, it was the only car that was ever in the Dakar Rally that actually raced the Dakar Rally. Um, it didn't finish, unfortunately, but it ran very well. Uh, we've had some, a couple great stories on the channel about that car, and now it's with a, uh, a great family that owns that car, but original patina, original graphics on that car, and just such an icon. And then the Time Capsule LM. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, the Time Capsule Collection, a grouping of five 80s iconic cars. Uh, the LM was probably the nicest, the best LM uh, I've ever seen. Probably one of the best in the world. One owner, a thousand miles, an American version, still had plastic on the seats, pearl white on red, original tires, just doesn't get better. Uh, so again, uh, you can see my passion the way I talk with my hands there about that car, but that car is one of the best we've sold. Um, and I grouped those two cars together, so uh, I apologize. This might end up like 18 cars, but I'm grouping a few cars together. Uh, and, then, and then the Murcielago RGT. <laughs> Uh, this car will be making its way back to Miami very soon. This is the uh, factory show car. Uh, we've had two RGTs, but the factory show car, 
both the race car and factory show car were very special, but the factory show car, a bare carbon car, uh, so, so cool. This is a factory prototype, factory show car in the Lamborghini Museum to be part of that history. Um, there's not that many uh, you know, Lamborghini prototypes that were built over time, and this was the Frankfurt Auto Show car. So again, very, very exciting car to be part of. Um, then we sold, um, and this never made it to our website, it went straight to a collector. Uh, we sold a really important Porsche collection, and part of that Porsche collection was a 959S um, and a roof yellow bird with almost no miles. And wow, that's all I can say. Um, if you know how important the roof yellow bird is to tuning cars, to Porsche, uh, the iconic cars that, that basically were all over the cover of magazines, uh, we're talking cars that you know, 211 miles per hour in 1987, uh, top speed runs, absolutely insane. Uh, and to find one today is basically impossible. What I didn't realize at the time was as important as that car was the AMG Hammer prototype. Um, we had actually had two of the prototypes, um, the black on blue car and the silver on black car, which was recently restored by Rentec. We learned later after we sold it, that was actually the car that broke the 300 kilometer per hour barrier, uh, that Hartmut had made modifications to, to basically hit that record, and he did in that exact car. So again, very important car. 20 years from now, we're gonna be talking about these cars. Um, and, and I just think, again, that car is so, so significant. And then how could I forget, uh, essentially, the great Diablos we've sold, I, I would say, there's probably three or four cars that stand out in my mind. One, and I don't know if I've ever publicly talked about this, but I did end up trading, not completely selling, but trading my SE30 Yota uh, for a regular SE30. Um, same spec, purple on the blue Alcantara, uh, but my Yota was one of the most special cars. Um, one of the things I realized while owning it, and I've, I haven't talked about why I sold it or what happened, uh, I plan to keep it forever and give it to my son or my kids now. Um, but I wasn't at the place in my life financially to own such an important car. Um, I wanted something I could drive more. Um, my dream was always just an SE30. Um, I never thought I'd even own a Yota. Um, and uh, listen, it was a, a huge financial stretch for me, um, uh, you know, uh, but I did it. And it went to an incredible owner, an incredible home, uh, sort of honored to have seen it gone to him. And at the end of the day, I got my dream car. I got a purple on blue um, SE30 European spec. So, uh, but having that car, um, it was owned by a factory uh, Lamborghini VIP. Um, it, was, it was used by Valentino and period. There's great photos of that car in the yearbook. Um, and you know, later when we were going through factory records, we saw that it was one of the original factory Yotas uh, produced in, in that list of factory cars. So again, I get emotional maybe about that car, but super special car and it was an honor to have owned it. Uh, we've had two Diablo GTs. Um, the, the yellow Diablo GT we had, it, it, I don't think it made it to Miami, maybe a day or so, um, but that was Benny Caiola's personal Diablo GT. I mean, Benny Caiola, uh, the reason why the Pagani Huayra is named the BC is because of Benny Caiola. And um, uh, he was one of the first, uh, basically, uh, you know, guys behind Pagani that bought, I think, the first Pagani and then the second Pagani. And, you know, Horatio honored him. And he was just this really passionate collector, sweetheart, man. Um, I had met him at a young guy at some of the track events uh, during Cavallino, and he had this incredible collection of cars, and we had, had the opportunity to uh, sell that car and see it go to a great home. And then we had the silver GT that we recently sold, and those cars are just spectacular. And then there was one more Diablo, I mean, so many Diablos that stand out, but our gold Diablo 6.0, uh, one of the SE cars with, I believe, 600 miles I don't think we'll ever see another car like that. It was just absolutely perfect. Um, one owner car, uh, the undercarriage was perfect. And uh, again, go find a gold Diablo 6.0 SE. One owner, 600 miles. Um, so very, very hard to find. Uh, and uh, let's see, I, there's a couple other, I would call runners up. 
Uh, we recently sold a 355 Challenge car that was the championship winning car for two years. Uh, we're currently restoring the car for a, a young collector. Very excited for him. We'll be showing the car as well next year. Um, and this is a car that, listen, I'm a huge Challenge fan. 355 Challenges are what sort of inspired my interest in racing as a young guy. And um, this was a car that was a championship winner twice. One of the most important challenge cars of all time. There's Hot Wheels models made of this car. Um, so uh, there's, there's a ton of models that made of this car. So it's very, very special car. Um, and I would definitely have to say, one day we'll look back on it and say, wow, important car. Um, and I told everyone to buy this. No one listened to me. The green manual Super Legera Gallardo. Um, I get calls about this car all the time. There was five or six Superleggeras that came to North America with a manual. Um, basically, you could call it the best variant of the Gallardo that was offered with a manual, and it was Verde Ithaca uh, with a small wing. I mean, all the best options. Um, I couldn't afford it, but my father said, buy the car, <laughs> just buy it. Um, but it was something at the time, uh, I definitely couldn't make the stretch. Um, went to a great collector and uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's going to be hard to ever duplicate that a car again. Um, that is my list. Uh, it's sort of like 15. I threw in some extras there and, and grouped them together. Um, but yeah, we've had an incredible opportunity. We have a ton more great cars coming. Uh, we're always buying interesting things. I, I, maybe if, if my list was current inventory, we'd add our current Mira SV. I actually forgot a car that's on the list, and I just realized there's two Mura SVs that stick out in my mind. Uh, one is the Preservation Mura SV, which was absolutely mind-blowing. Um, original paint, original interior. It came with its original tires. Best of the best of the best of the best. Um, and even uh, Andrew Romanowski from the Lamborghini Club, who's very, very uh, knowledgeable, he knows Muras, he came to inspect it and was blown away. Uh, we'll be showing that car in preservation category very soon. Um, and the white Mura SV that is being finished now at Cremonini. So again, uh, go find a white with blue Mura SV. I've never seen one. Um, so when that car will be finished, it'll be completely stunning, uh, completely special. And I, you know, I look at that car as just it's going to be jewelry. Um, so very, very excited to be part of that. And listen, right now we have some incredible inventory as well, the PPG Pace car. Um, we also have another one-off Mirror SV, so maybe those will make it to the list once they sell. Um, but yeah, that is some of the most exciting cars we've sold. Um, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.